Hey, this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria, and without being able to get on court to play test rackets, um, I'm pleased to bring you the first in our series that will look to address racket terminology, hopefully helping you to buy the right racket for you. So today we're going to have a look at racket head sizes, and we're also going to discuss, because it's quite interconnected with that, racket sweet spots. Uh, there are three main categories of racket head size, um, starting with first mid-size rackets. Now mid-size rackets actually have small um, racket head sizes. They can range between 85 square inches through to 93 square inches. Now they tend to be heavier, they tend to be harder to use because of that small head size delivering a relatively small sweet spot and we'll discuss sweet spot a little bit later. They have a rich history so if you were to go back uh, to when I was a junior and watching a lot of tennis you had a lot of pros using mid-size rackets and winning grand slams with them just think of Sampras, Edberg uh, and of course early uh, years Federer they were all using the 85 square inch pro staff racket a, a classic for many people there was exceptions to that mid-size era um, Agassi for example was using an oversized racket at that time and I guess his game was very different to Sampras and Edberg so he was looking for different things and and we as recreational players should also consider that so mid-size rackets smaller racket head size tend to be heavier tend to be harder to use and they will come with a slightly smaller sweet spot. Moving on then to the second category and that's what's known as the tweener category abbreviated for I guess anything sort of in between the other two categories and they will range between 95 square inches and about 102 square inches. Uh, they are of course the most commonly used both in professional circles and a recreational level. Uh, if we think about the pro scene so there's a number of players still playing with 95 square inch head sizes. You have Jamie Murray using the Dunlop racket that I really like. Uh, that's also used by Kevin Anderson um, you have Shapovalov using the Yonex V-Core 95 and I guess at the range within the tweeners those 95 square inch rackets will give you um, a lot of control and a lot of precision which is what mid-size rackets in theory should deliver you. 98 square inches is probably the most commonly used racket head size fitting within that tweener range and they are kind of delivering a little bit of everything they give you a bit of that precision and control that those smaller head sizes might give you but they'll also give you a bit more power and spin which um, larger head sizes are meant to give you although I guess around power that's a bit questionable and is something we'll cover in another video if we think about 98 square inch head sizes then big on the Pro Tour, I mean you think of some common rackets, the Wilson Blade is the most commonly used racket on tour, Babolat Pure Strike, uh, also Yonex uh, E-Zones, and there's plenty of examples of pros using 98 square inch head sizes, Dominic Team, Nick Tyrios, um, and of course Tistipas with the Blade. The higher end of that tweener range we have the 100 square inch rackets, and again some pretty big players are using that if we think of Rafa Nadal he made famous the Pure Aero a racket pretty much made for him or at least versions of that are available for us to use it offers I guess within that tweener range the most power and spin potential so again worthwhile considering what sort of game you have what sort of game you want to have when you're considering what racket to buy for you Moving on to the third category and the oversized category. So there are examples of that and people are using it both at a recreational level and on tour. I guess the most obvious example would be Serena Williams with her uh, Wilson Blade SW104 with the 104 inch Agassi. So he had an oversized racket throughout his career, the Head Radical Tour oversized. Uh, and that, I guess, delivered a lot of what he needed, that extra bit of forgiveness, um, quite a lot of power. And when he was facing players who had massive serves and big sort of volume potential, he probably needed that forgiveness, that extra sweet spot uh, to win everything that he did. So again, another example of considering where your game is at and then considering what racket within those categories you should look at. 
Now it's worth remembering that a lot of people try to model their game on pro players and there's nothing wrong with that, but professional players don't necessarily play with the rackets they're endorsing. Um, Andy Murray, for example, he is endorsing a 98 square inch racket, the, the head radical, where in reality he's using a pro stock racket, which is 95 square inches. Djokovic is another example. He's endorsing the head spread racket, which is 100 square inches for all of us to buy, but he is in actual fact using a pro stock racket which is heavily customized for him professionally which has a 95 square inch uh, they're looking for as much control and precision that they can get while still having some power and spin so sweet spot then what does sweet spot mean sweet spot tends to grow depending on the size of the racket head um, but actually all sweet spot refers to is usually one spot within the racket which is the point at which the ball will connect with the racket and the racket can return the ball off of the racket without the racket wobbling so generally speaking again it is taken that a larger head size can be more stable so what is the right racket for you? So I think ultimately the message has to be test, test, test. Get out there and racket test some mid-size, some tweener and all the ranges within that and some oversized rackets and be honest about your level. If you are very fit, if you have an advanced game, if you have solid timing and everything that you're looking for is all about put away power and precision, then maybe a mid-size racket works for you. If you're wanting something that gives you a bit of everything, then look in the tweener range. But within that, if you're looking for more spin and power, maybe look at that 100 to 102 square inches. If you're looking for some power, some spin, but also primarily some control, then maybe 98, 95 square inches. And then of course, if you are somebody who perhaps isn't as fast as they used to be, you are finding that you're shanking a lot of shots, then maybe you need to look at some oversized rackets with the right weight and the right balance to make it something that you can swing to give you that little bit of forgiveness in your game. So I hope this video has been useful. Think about liking, subscribing. There'll be plenty more in this series around racket terminology that I ultimately hope will save you some time and money in getting the right racket for you. After all, it's the only tool that we have as tennis players to improve our game. Don't play tennis at the moment. I mean, it's important to stay in, but um, one thing we can do is think about our game, work on our fitness, and certainly we'll be coming back to you with some fitness videos that you can do at home. So let's all look forward to get back on court when we can.